Okay, so we're going to continue. Um, so we looked at uh, the uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and I hope we are clear about that. Um, you know, uh, how can we, um, in what context is it blasphemy? You know, um, we've had some questions in the sense, uh, people saying, okay, um, you know, have I committed the unpardonable sin? Like, have I committed the unforgivable sin? Uh, does anyone have any question like that or any fears? Okay. Um, so the thing is this, you know, when you, if, 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 if you're struggling with that sense, that itself is a good thing. Right? If you're struggling with that question, you know, have I committed that sin knowingly, unknowingly? Um, you know, have I done that? That's a good sign. Okay, why is it a good sign? Because the Bible says that the flesh is in conflict with the spirit. The spirit is in conflict with the flesh. The flesh wants to do the things that, you know, uh, against the things of the spirit. But then there's that conflict. But as long as that conflict is there, which means you're in a good place, you're in a good posture. What is that good posture? That posture is God. You know, I want to please you. And... Uh, I don't want to be in a place where I, you know, displease you in any way. So now that's a good thing. But if you if if somebody's in a place where saying I, I don't care, you know, I don't care what happens, I don't, I don't this thing, I just want to go my way. Okay, now that's a bad thing. Right? But as long as you have that that tension is there in, in you, that's a good thing, which means that your spirit is still sensitive, right, to the work of the spirit. You still want to do the things that please God. Right. So, so yeah. Uh, just wanted to mention that. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Let's just look at some of the other things that the Lord Jesus taught um, taught his disciples. Right. Let's go to Luke eleven and verse thirteen. So, Lou, you be looked at the fact that um, we are uh, the Lord Jesus taught, saying that you will be inspired. You will be speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So, um, you know, I'm sure you've uh, heard speakers say. The Lord told me. I woke up this morning. The Lord told me, and uh, I remember when I was in school, and uh, you know, me and my friends, we used to make uh, you know fun of such people, and saying, you know, the, these people are saying, you know, they wake up in the morning, and then they, the Lord told me, and you know, how can it be? You know, it's just that they found something that they wanted to speak, and then they did it. You know, something interesting. How can the Lord tell them, right? But the thing is, is that's the truth that you speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So uh, that, yes, the Lord will speak because he's, he's a living God. Yes, the Lord will, you know, he, since he knows the hearts of the people, he will move you to or inspire you to speak those things. So that's a reality, right? That's something that we saw. Okay, Luke 11, verse 13. Um, the Lord Jesus saying, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more... Will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Okay. If you read the verses before that, from verse 9 onwards, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for a bread from any father among you, Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you, then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So another important principle here, the Lord is saying that you don't have to fight. You don't have to struggle. You're asking your heavenly father. You're asking a good thing. And his teaching is saying that uh, uh, he's saying that he's a heavenly father. He knows how to give good things to his children. If you ask, will he, will he not give? Okay. So um, maybe there are some of us here. I, I don't know. Like if all of us have, you know, started praying in the spirit and you know maybe you know the, I don't know I don't want to kind of this thing ask you have you started praying in tongues no but maybe there are some of us who are saying you know maybe the Lord is it's not giving me yeah, it's not happening I don't know why right if you're struggling with that just get rid of that 
gets rid of that mentality. You know, sometimes we think, okay, maybe I have to be, I've not reached that stage yet. I'm not mature enough. I'm not holy enough. I'm not perfect enough in order to be filled with the Spirit. Some of us struggle with that, right? But here we see a very different thing. Say, ask and you receive. Right? Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open to you. Okay. And some of us might have that fear. Oh, I don't want to be filled with the evil spirit. Right? Um, like I knew someone uh, who uh, we just grew up with in our youth group. And um, like she, she uh, at that time, I was not filled with this. I mean, I was, I was, I didn't have the gift of tongues, and yeah, so I was open to it, but I did not, you know, I did not have it in my own life. So I, I used to be fascinated by all these people who are praying in tongues and all that. So she used to pray in tongues, but then um, after many years, we met, and then I asked her, you know, did you still pray in tongues? She said, no, I stopped. I stopped because uh, why? Well, I, I was actually a little scared because what if it's the evil spirit and not the Holy Spirit? And what if it's the evil spirit who is doing that? Okay, so, so the Lord is saying here, hey, if you ask an earthly father who has all faults and you know limitations, if you ask the father for bread, will he give her? Any you know, decent father, will uh, a parent, will he give a stone to a child who is hungry? No. So how can we say, you know, how can we have that argument that I asked for the Holy Spirit, but you know, but uh, uh, but I got filled with something else, right? So the Father will never allow that to happen. Yes, there have been instances of people being filled uh, or opening their doors to the evil spirit. Those are people who were actually in, you know, in black magic and in witchcraft, who had actually opened their lives for the demonic spirits to come and work in their lives. So they were. You know, they had the spirits, you know, in them manifesting, uh, you know, these kind of things in them, right? When you ask the father, he gives. He's a good father. Okay? So that is what the Lord taught. He's saying he's a heavenly father. He will give good gifts. He will not give you anything to harm you. And all you need to do, you don't have to struggle. All you need to do is ask. Okay? Okay. Next one. John chapter 3. Um, Okay, uh, I, I think that's about um, the the spirit of God and how he moves um, is, is uh, in uh, his conversation with Nicodemus, um, right? Okay, so let's um, okay. Let, I think we'll we'll just go on to uh, something else. Let's go to the next chapter, John chapter four. John chapter 3 is that interaction with um, Nicodemus, and he says, you know, about being born again, uh, um, and uh, how can one be born again, how can a person be born again, etc. You can just go through that, and, and the Lord says, you know, this is how it is, that um, uh, the, 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 that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that the physical birth, that which is born of the spirit is spirit, referring to spiritual birth, okay? Um, let's go to uh, John chapter 4. Okay. Uh, John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, um, the Lord talks about uh, uh, he's having this conversation with a woman at the well. And um, as part of that conversation towards the end, you know, the Lord Jesus um, makes this interesting statement. He says in verse 23, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay, so this is in response to that question, you know, saying, should we worship here, should we worship there? And he's saying, this is what true worship will look like, and the, God is, uh, and the Father is seeking true worshipers, those who will worship in spirit and in truth, meaning those who will worship out of their innermost being, and those who will worship in truth, because God is spirit. Okay, so when we say uh, those who will worship in spirit and in truth, it says out of our innermost being and and as led by the spirit, you know, all that is there, right? Okay, let's look, turn to John chapter six and verse sixty-three. John six and verse sixty-three. Okay, um, the Lord is saying, "It is the spirit who gives life." Okay. It is the Spirit who gives life. 
the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life so he's talking about the work of the holy spirit something that the holy spirit does he brings life okay. the the holy spirit brings life and it and, and it's the word used there is zoe okay when we see uh, life there are two kinds of words and one is bios okay bios means biological life right we we breathe we we live and we have biological life we say okay this person is alive but there's another kind of life that's uh, the word zoe what does that mean god kind of life okay god kind of life where it talks about spiritual life and the lord is saying the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life it is the spirit who gives life okay now you can have physical life but if you need spiritual life it is the holy spirit who gives spiritual life it is the holy spirit who brings zoe okay um let's move on to chapter 7 chapter 7 verse um, 38 and 39 okay um maybe we'll read from verse 37 john chapter 7 verse 37 on the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried out saying if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified okay so let's let's just look at this what is the Lord saying if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink okay so he's saying if anyone is thirsty if anyone is uh, what is thirst you know you feel that okay I, you need something right you're lacking something you need it and uh, you feel that okay I need so bad that I can't continue right? I'm, I'm thirsty and the Lord is saying if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink it means that okay I'm going to fulfill that thirst let him come to me let him uh, have or experience um, sorry let him come to me right and he says um, he who believes in me okay now he has come yes Lord I believe in you out of his heart will flow rivers of living water okay and then John goes on to explain that he says this he spoke concerning the spirit concerning the Holy Spirit so the, you know out of one's heart rivers of living water flowing out is talking about the work of the Holy Spirit or the manifestation of the Holy Spirit okay so what does a river do have you all been to the river okay no okay uh, have you tried swimming in the river okay uh, that's where I tried to learn swimming didn't learn it's been many years I swim like this I start like this and then go down 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 <laughs> okay so river I think childhood you know maybe so if you notice wherever the river is there is life right people go to the river to draw water uh, around the river it's fertile you know it, there are crops there's the civilization actually around the river wherever the river is right so the Lord is saying hey out of your heart will flow rivers you know multiple rivers of living water okay so this river is wherever the river flows it's going to bring life saying out of his heart rivers of living water he's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit so he who believes in me the believer so when I believe in the Lord the Holy Spirit he comes and indwells us and he's going to flow out of us and right? he's going to do something through us out of your heart will flow rivers of living water and that's going to impact others that's going to touch the lives of others right? so uh, and John says you know this he talk he spoke concerning the spirit and you know very interesting right he says concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given 
because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, and then we further we see, I, you know, these things you will do also because I go to my Father. If I go to my Father, I will send another helper, the, the helper, you know, the Paraclete. Right? It's talking about the Holy Spirit. So, um, so we see this, right? Um, the Holy Spirit referred to as rivers of living water flowing out of the life of the, out of the heart of the believer. Okay, John chapter fourteen. Um, yeah, we've seen, we've read some of the verses. Uh, let's just read them again. John chapter fourteen, verse sixteen. Okay, and I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper that he may abide with you for ever okay so uh, very important uh, the, the the ascension of the lord leading to the outpouring of the holy spirit and the holy spirit will stay with us for ever you no know, that's that's again a very important um, you know uh, truth understanding because he's not come to abandon Right. He's not come to leave us as orphans. Because the Lord Jesus, I, behold, I, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will send the helper. So the helper comes. What does he come to help us with? Right. We're going to learn about that. But he comes to help us live the very normal Christian life. Okay, The normal Christian life is not a boring Christian life. The normal Christian life is an exciting Christian life. Right. The normal Christian life is... It's it's not something with without difficulties, but it's not something with you know without challenges. But it's an overcoming life. It's an overcoming life because of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we we uh, the, the Lord is saying that um, He's the Helper. He's called as the Parakletos. He was He will come alongside, and He will help another Helper, which means one. Who is just like me, who is apart from me, who will be with you. Who's just like me, who well, apart from me, will be with you. Right? Another Alos Parakletos. Okay? Who's just like me, who's apart from me, will be with you. The Parakletos who is help who's gonna help you. Right? And he says he'll be he'll, he, that he may abide with you forever. That's an, that's an important thing because you know, in our lowest points of life. In our lowest, maybe you know you are not there yet, or you you, you don't have to be there. Like right? you don't have to be there, you don't have, have to reach that place. But you notice someone, you see some other believer, who's reached a low point in life, and they're saying, "God has abandoned me." Why? Because of the stuff that I've done in life, right? Because of stuff that I've done in life, things that I've dabbled with. Uh, the decisions that I've taken, the way that I've treated my family, my spouse, my kids, and you know, I've made so many mistakes as a believer. So there's no hope. God is abandoned. You know, there are people who reach that place. You know, I, I was a person who reached that place. I said, oh, as a believer, oh man, what kind of a life am I living? Double life, this, that, and the other, and that's it. There's no hope. But God reminds us the very reason He's staying with us is to come out or bring us out of that place. Bring us out of that place of hopelessness. Right? He will abide with us for ever. He's not one to abandon us, but He will abide with us. Okay, so that's what the Lord is you know, teaching uh, His disciples. Hey, He will abide with you forever. Don't worry, He'll stay with you. He will stay with you. He will, you know, he will lead you. He will be with you forever. Okay, let's read uh, verse um, 17, the next verse. The Spirit of Truth, He's called the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him, nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Okay, so the Lord is saying, okay, he's the spirit of truth. Okay, so what does that mean? Spirit of truth. Right. Sorry, he tells the truth, okay. Yeah.
he he's the one who reveals the truth yeah yeah he tells the truth he reveals the truth he leads us into all truth right um so which means that uh, we if we want to know the truth we can look to him we can rely on him right he will lead us into what is truth right so there's no nothing falsehood about him now now truth is always um, not very comfortable right so you go to your friend and say hey just tell me the truth is this looking okay just tell me the truth and your friend is like uh, yeah it's okay yaar it's okay fine fine you know no no you tell me the truth is it looking okay <laughs> and then the friend looks at you and says no you change <laughs> and you're very disappointed you wanted the truth you heard the truth but now you're disappointed because of the truth right why because it's the truth it's not something that you you know you it's 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 not always comfortable it's not always pleasing right the truth and he is a spirit of truth and sometimes what he speaks will be like sword piercing like just piercing convicting like it just goes to our heart because uh, he, what he says agrees with the word he's the living word and the lord jesus says right words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life and it cuts to the enemy's be right and uh, when he does surgery no anesthesia and you feel the pain <laughs> right throughout right so he speaks the truth he is the truth and he is the spirit of truth and he dwells with you and he will be in you so we can always you know it's, it's such an awesome privilege right to be in christ what an awesome privilege to be called new creations what an awesome privilege to be set apart what an awesome privilege to be say to be you know to be the righteousness of god uh, in christ in him right uh, to be made that and uh, to be seated with him in the heavenly places what an awesome privilege right and to have the spirit of truth dwelling with us you know that should just cause us to just worship you know that 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 thing itself you know the spirit of truth god you dwell with me you stay with me i am never alone you are never alone because you have the spirit of truth dwelling with you forever he never leaves he never forsakes and so there's no reason for us to feel lonely because he is with us forever right okay um 26 verse 26 but when the helper comes whom i shall send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will testify of me and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning okay so he's talking about the paracletos the helper when he comes whom i shall send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will testify of me so we saw what testify was you know testify is to give proof to give evidence to give reassurance right to give uh, all that and say yes this is who he is so what is he giving evidence what is he giving proof or uh, reassurance about about jesus he will testify of me okay so you know um when you when you came to christ right you just knew of course all of us have different experience experiences of coming to the lord how it happened but when you put your faith in the lord you just knew deep inside that this is it right no one had to like hammer it into you probably they reasoned with you and all that but then that, there was that moment when you when you believe and it suddenly like the lights came on on the inside of you right it's like yeah this is it this is the truth why the holy spirit testified and it's yeah he does with reasoning he does with all those uh, you know arguments and everything but he brings that testifying you know he testifies to your spirit to the deepest part of you your innermost being and there's no there's no argument against it and like i know i can't explain it but i know this is the truth i can't explain it but i know jesus is lord right and all of us have been in that place where said, i i know this this is it finally right so he testifies of jesus the lord is saying he will testify of me he will give evidence he will give proof he will bring that reassurance 
to your spirit. He will testify of me. Okay, next um, we look at John chapter 15 and uh, verse 26. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I, I actually I was looking at uh, 1526, right? Um, now let's look at, um, I just skipped down to 1526. Let's look at 1426 for, for a minute. Okay. Um, John chapter 14 and verse 26. Uh, we, we see something very, very important here. Okay, John chapter 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, okay, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So who's the Holy Spirit? He's the teacher, right? He is teaching you all things. Okay, so we're saying, God, uh, you know, I don't understand these things. I don't understand these concepts. You know, teach me. Well, the Holy Spirit will teach. Not only will he teach, but he will also remind us. He will bring to remembrance. You know, many times we say, okay, I, I, I know I read it, but then I forget it. I, I, I can't remember it. The Lord is saying, hey, the Holy Spirit, he will bring to remembrance. He will remind you of those things, of the things that I taught. Okay, So I, I remember uh, um, 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 uh, um, uh, a man of God, uh, a Bible teacher, an evangelist, and he's got phenomenal, uh, you know, pheno I, I, I would say, I won't say phenomenal memory, but he quotes scripture, even as he's ministering, he quotes scripture right from Genesis to the Revelation. Okay, just the messages are full of verses and and it's not like the regular scripture you know something from Nahum something from you know um, so you you're like uh, how is it how does he do that you know he's got a fantastic memory but then he, but then he you know he himself says you know sometimes he goes uh, and some of the instances is sometimes he, he goes shopping he goes in a vehicle he leaves the car there, takes an auto, and comes back home because he forgot that he drove to that place. He's like, "Oh no, I'm I, names, dates, and all those things. I, I can't." So the secret is this: He says, "You know, when I read the Word, I go to this promise, John fourteen twenty six. The Lord says, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you. So I'm going to ask. I ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you teach me." And he also says that he will remind us, bring to remembrance. So I, you know, he says, I also ask the Lord, Lord, you remind me, you bring to remembrance. So when he, he says, when he's preaching, he, like you see that he's, he's not really opening the Bible, okay? He's, he's just holding the Bible and he says that the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance because he says, I just trust the Holy Spirit. He, you know, the Lord Jesus said, oh yeah, I, I take him at his word. I take him at his word. He will bring to remembrance. Okay, so maybe you can try that. You know, uh, we meditate on the word of God. We are called to meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Read the word of God. Declare, confess the word of God. And also pray, you know, meditate on this promise saying, come Holy Spirit, you know, you teach me. Come Holy Spirit, you remind me. You know, remind me of those things. Right? He will bring to our memory the very things that Jesus taught. He will remind us. Right, of the things, right? So, uh, so he's the teacher, he's the reminder of what he's taught. So, you know, when you think about that, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, you know, gift. It's a wonderful relationship. Right? We have a wonderful God. Right? You want, you're not lonely. He's, he's with you, and he's. Is flows out of the believer like rivers of living water, bringing life, bringing change, bringing freshness in the lives of others. And he teaches, so you know, things that we are um, unaware of, he teaches us and he brings to remembrance, he reminds us of the things that we have taught. I mean, we have been taught, but maybe it's somewhere there. He brings to remembrance, right? So we can ask him by faith and say, Lord, you teach us, you show us. Okay, let's look at one more. So we are, where are we looking at these verses? We are looking at 
the teachings of the Lord Jesus on the Holy Spirit. Right? That's the reason we are looking at these verses. Um, John chapter 16. Uh, let's look at uh, verse 7. Okay, 16 and 7. Uh, it says, Never, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Okay, now why did he say that? Um, we read verse 6. The Lord says, I have said these things to you. Sorrow has filled your heart. Because the Lord kept saying, you know, okay, I'm going away. I'm going away. And for three, three and a half years, you know, he's he's been with his disciples. They've done life together. And they're feeling sad, you know. Lord, where can I go? You have the words of life. You know, Peter himself said, you have the words of eternal life. Where can we go? Right? That instance when the Lord, everybody turned away and walked uh, away from the Lord. So they were dependent on the Lord. And then now he's saying he's going away. So sorrow fills their heart. And the Lord is saying this, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Which means it is to your benefit. For if I do not go away, the, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, okay, let's listen to this carefully. I read this. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, he, will, he does the work of convicting, right? Convicting, which means that there is something that happens deep within where you are. When you say convict, you know, I'm, I'm convinced. It does the work of conviction. It brings conviction to our heart. Right? He testifies of Jesus. He brings conviction. He says he convicts the world of sin, convicts the world of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9, of sin, because they do not believe in me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will... Oh, man. Okay. Okay, batteries are running a little low. Uh, everyone, so I'm just uh, in case it stops, um, just continue to stay on, right? Okay, okay. So um, it says, I will. Uh, he, he, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of um, of truth, of righteousness, of uh, sorry, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And the Lord says in verse thirteen, He says, um, "The Spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth, for He will speak." On his, he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Okay, so he's the Spirit of Truth. He will guide you. Okay, so Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So we say, okay, I need to be guided. I need guidance. The Holy Spirit will guide. If we are dependent on Him, if we ask Him, He will guide into all truth. Okay, and it also says that. Uh, he will tell you of things to come. Okay, so what has happened is that um, for you know the disciples, he's saying, I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. You can't retain it. You cannot, you know, you can't handle it. You cannot bear them now. But who's going to teach them? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to tell them of things to come. And he did that, right? Especially for John. What did he say? Looking at uh, John chapter 16 and, uh, and verse 13, talking about how um, he will tell us of things to come. Okay, And uh, he will do that in our own lives as well, that he will teach us, he will show us of things to come. You know, maybe, uh, you know, our, we are, maybe we are concerned about our lives. Lord, what is it that, that is there in the future, like for me? He will show. He will tell us, right? Uh, and he can do that in many different ways. Uh, it can be through a word which comes from scripture. It can be through a prophetic word. It comes from someone. He can he can tell us of you know our destiny, our call, our plan, a purpose that he has for us. He will show us. Right? He will tell us. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, uh, to trust his timing. 
right? To trust his timing, he will show us, he will tell us. He's a God who reveals, right? Um, I just wanted to just share this, you know, the, um, just for us to know that, yeah, uh, he is a God who talks about things to come. He knows what is their plans. You know, the first time I came to All People's Church, okay, um, was in the year uh, 2000, okay, 2001. Okay, 2001, and it was, I think, it was September, okay, 2001, September, the first time I'm stepping into All People's Church, um, and I used to be part of another church, and we were, we were all, you know, uh, leading, I was part of a worship team there, uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, we, we were invited to All People's Church to lead worship in one of their meetings, and uh, and uh, and All People's Church, church was very, very small, you know, uh, maybe it was eight to ten people that was it and uh, it was meeting in a place in a small shed kind of a place a thatched roof and all that so uh, anyway we came led worship and uh, the, the the very word the first you know uh, there was a guest speaker there and uh, i was working with this company so i finished we, we were all there finished leading worship went out to make those calls you know customers had called so it was evening i was returning the calls i went out and then my wife comes and calls me and he says, hey, the speaker is calling you. He has something to tell you. Just come. So I went in. You know, people were looking at me. I was feeling a little weird. I went in. And then uh, so this is what the guest speaker said. He said, you know, God is calling you to be a pastor. OK. So first time somebody's ever told that, first time every, and, and I'm hearing anything like that. So he said, God is calling you to be a pastor. Okay, and after the meeting was over, he was asking, you know, like, did it witness to your spirit? And, you know, I, I, I came from a church where we did not talk about prophecy, but we did not talk about much about the Holy Spirit and all that. So all, everything was new to me. So I said, no, this is the first time. I don't know. Right. Uh, but God who knew the future. Okay. So it's amazing. It's funny because the very place where I heard the prophecy, is the very place that he brought me to to groom me in the pastoral call. The very place, right? So who who does that? It's the Holy Spirit. He'll tell us of things to come. So I remember after that, every September, um, reminding me of um, uh, of this of this word, remind particular thing every year so he will tell us he will show us of the things to come okay now i just wanted to share that because he is well able to do that in each one of our lives okay each one of our lives okay some of us are saying okay i i know what i'm going to do okay this is what what is planned and maybe you know you're saying okay the next three years at least i know <laughs> or next two years at least i know next one year okay, i'm going to be you know preparing myself and even during that time Right, you you can ask the Lord, Lord, this is who you are. You said you will tell us of things to come, and in my own life, Lord, I want to know so that I can prepare. I can, you know, and and just leave it to God. Right, let the burden not be on you. You just say, okay, Lord, this is who you are. You will tell, and you will prepare me. You will show me, and I, I'm just just asking you, God. I'm ready. I'm willing. Show me. Teach me. Tell me. Right. So uh, He'll do that. Okay. So that's wonderful, right? Uh, he'll show us. He's with us. He will guide us into all truth. Okay. Um, we have a couple of minutes. Let's look at um, a few other scriptures. The work of the Holy Spirit in, in the Lord Jesus' death and resurrection. Okay, let's look at um, um, the scriptures there. First Timothy 3 and verse 16. Okay. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Um, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Okay, that whole wor word justification, um, you know, by the Holy Spirit, He raised Him from the dead, and um, it, and it was a work of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, Hebrews 9 um, declares it even more, describes it even more. 
Okay, it says Hebrews Hebrews nine and verse fourteen. Um, okay, Hebrews nine and verse fourteen. Uh, let's read thirteen and fourteen. Okay, for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living god okay. who through the eternal spirit offered himself to god without spot i'm uh, sorry offered himself without spot to god so this work of offering himself uh, this work of offering himself as that sacrifice by the holy spirit for the lord himself right christ himself offered he offered himself by the work of the holy spirit by the eternal spirit okay let's look at one more verse first peter 3 and verse 18 Okay, first Peter three and verse eighteen. Um, Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Okay, so Christ offered himself uh, as a sacrifice by the work of the spirit and he was raised from the dead he was made alive by the work of the holy spirit and it says here that um, uh, put to death in the flesh but made alive by the spirit okay so we'll we'll stop here so we see you know all these things the ministry of the wonderful ministry of the holy spirit in the life of the lord jesus the teachings of the holy spirit by the lord Jesus. Okay. So next class, you know, I'm sure you might have some questions. We'll um, answer those questions as well. Okay. Thank you so much, um, online class students. Thank you for bearing with all the interruptions. God bless. See you.